Okay, guys, so we're going to review uh, this technique that I did against Gabby McComb in the World Nogi Finals of the Absolute, okay? Ready? Go, 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 right to it, right to it. Nice, 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 two on one, nice, yeah! Nice, nice, two on one, nice, yay! Yeah. So my thought process going behind this was kind of inspired by a judo technique. And that's kind of why we're starting off in the gi and then gonna show the crossover to no gi. So it came off of her going for the collar tie here really strong, okay? But in judo, what I have normally have done is when they have this collar grip. So it was kind of inspired by this and sort of a similar technique. So I'm gonna break that down first and show it. And then I'm gonna show how I do a nogi variation so you can see the crossover. So I'm gonna link onto the collar here. I really don't like breaking grips. I find it incredibly difficult, particularly because a lot of my training partners are stronger than me, they're bigger than me. And when I try and put a lot of energy into, into grip breaking, I find that it's very difficult and I'm often quite tired afterwards. I'll pop a grip here and then my partner's gonna immediately take that same grip. Even when I make that effort to break the grip and keep it away from me, eventually they end up tying me back up with grips. So my answer to that was to turn a strong grip into something that's beneficial for me instead. So instead of popping this grip and expiring a lot of energy, expiring, that's not a word. <laughs> pretend it is. <laughs> I'm going to maintain this grip on the collar and I'm going to fold Gabrielle's bicep inwards by look, I cup here with a swan grip, peel his elbow in towards me and now I can close the distance. So my other arm is going to reach around and I'm going to reach for the lat here. So when we're in the gi we have the benefit of taking grips right? So when I pull here and I rotate his elbow inwards I can catch onto the lat and make a reinforcement by grabbing the grip. If I have you release that now, thank you. Okay, so usually people will tend to release here because it's putting a lot of pressure on their shoulder. So when they try and extend away, it's difficult. They may off up to release and then try and re-pummel for a body lock here. So I've peeled his grip in and I'm trying to fold my body in front of his elbow so that he can't rotate it behind me. Now from this position, what I'm gonna look to do here is I'm gonna hook my foot behind Gabrielle's knee. Okay, here. So I'm keeping my weight down heavy over the shoulder because the, the defense to this is for him to posture up and then pull himself away, rotating through the side. So I need to make sure my weight is folding down heavy over his shoulder. From this position, now I can bring my foot up and behind the knee and I'm gonna throw my body weight underneath him. <laughs> so from this position, look, I'm holding tight on this grip my lead leg is gonna step behind here and I'm making like a hook. So I'm not being limp and floppy. We don't like limp floppy things. So I'm gonna keep, <laughs> I'm gonna keep my foot stiff and I'm gonna keep it behind his knee here, right? So I'm folding my knee inwards, ready to hook. And this leg, as I throw my body away underneath Gabrielle, I'm going to extend my leg straight to flick his weight off of me. I don't want to load too much weight up on top of me, particularly if you're with a bigger opponent. I want to be able to extend and flick his body weight away. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. I'm here, I'm keeping the weight down, I'm gripping at the elbow, my foot steps in. And now look, I drop my weight underneath and I extend. From this position, okay, I can rotate up onto my knees and close that space. So one more time. Let's see it again in super slow motion. So now let's look at the crossover in the nogi, in the nogi. So she had this nice collar tie here and I was having a lot of difficulty dealing with it actually because I also like to collar tie on this side, but she kept beating me on this side of this collar tie. So I'm gonna fold this in the same way. 
only now we don't have to worry about popping grips or anything like that. I'm just gonna peel the elbow to the inside and same thing, rotate heavy over Gabrielle's elbow here. I'm peeling this open and now, Instead of bringing my foot to flick behind, although that is an option, it's a little more risky to throw my weight behind like that because I'll probably slip off minus the grips, right? So instead, I'm gonna bring my knee behind. This is what ended up happening. I close the distance. My hand is gripping here at the lat instead of on the gi. Okay, so I'm gripping here and I'm gonna bring my knee behind as I rotate forward and then bow my partner backwards. Nice, 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 two on one, nice, yeah! So I'm here, I'm struggling, I don't want to go 50-50 with my collar tie here, we're just going to end up in a shoving battle, a lot of jiu-jitsu matches end up that way, where we're just driving into each other, collar tie. So instead, look, I'm going to switch the angle, here, I'm going to rotate my shoulder this way to knock off this grip, but I don't want to turn away for too long. So if I'm here and I turn, okay, I'm exposed. So I'm just going to do a little nudge and I'm refilling that space straight away. I grip the lat, I'm driving my weight in and now instead of going with my foot, I'm going to step in with my knee. Okay, that's going to make my block and I need to take him over the direction that I'm blocking. So as I bring my knee behind, I rotate through and I make sure I land with my hips square so it's harder for my opponent to trip me over afterwards. So if I'm here off balance, potentially I could be swept back. So I'm bringing my hips square to my partner to make sure I'm keeping my base nice and strong, which is probably like the basic, biggest risk with the crossover with judo throws. When we do these big explosive uh, judo throws, we tend to overextend ourselves because the goal is to get that partner's back on the mat, right? So there's a lot of throws where you throw them and you roll over. So you could end up rolling yourself and losing your base and landing in a bad position. So just crossing that over to jiu-jitsu, making sure you're keeping your base nice and strong. Will the throw look as cool? No, because it's not the nature of the type of grappling that we're doing, unfortunately. Much less cool, but effective. So yeah, I hope you give it a go, guys, and I hope you enjoy. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are you copying me? I don't know.